Hello and welcome to EV Car Share. So today we are heading down to Southampton. So going from Peterborough, I'm sat currently at the Peterborough Services um, to start off the video. And I'm heading down to Southampton. Last night looking at routes, Google was kind of saying go by the M25 or you can go by Oxford. Um, sat nav in Kia has said to go by Oxford. Um, I don't know how the the traffic's going to progress this morning. Based on yesterday, traffic wasn't too bad overall, certainly on my way down to Dunstable where I went yesterday. But um, there were some roadworks on the A1 and the M1 and yeah, I think Oxford is probably better. So that's the way I'm going. So at the moment, as I say, sat here, I've got 93% in the battery. I've got 142 miles to get to Southampton. It says I will get there with 33%. So if that is correct, then clearly I will need to recharge on the way home uh, later tonight. So that's that. Um, currently sat, as I say, at Peterborough Services. I can see over there that the Ionity chargers, there are some free. So if I had needed to charge this morning before going, if I didn't have my home charging or something like that, there's availability I could plug in there it's currently just gone six because I need to get down there um, in good time so it's a long journey so um, there we go that's the current state of affairs um, I will use this drive to try to investigate let's call it investigate investigate some of the theories online about car electric cars catching fire so that's one of the things i'm going to talk about during the journey today um, but for now let's get on the move so let's get this thing on the road um, with, yeah so let's go and now we're in some traffic a bit of um bit of a queue here on the a34 the sign said 30 minute delay it gets busy down here this time of morning so we're just before eight o'clock so 7.55 um, this is passing or approaching Oxford so at the moment we're approaching Oxford um, I'm hoping most of this delay is factored into my sat nav's prediction already um, so it's not 30 minutes on top of what my sat nav was saying um, so my sat nav was saying 9.33 when I joined this queue, it's now 9.38, so I have lost, uh, what's that, five minutes. <clears throat> um, in addition, or the queue has got five minutes worse maybe, who knows. I think it's still better than going via the M1, M25 from what I've heard on the, on the news, the traffic news, traffic reports have been very... Um, yeah, bad, I guess, is the best phrase for the M1 and the repairs and the roadworks and culmination of the accident that happened last night. So I think I'm on the best route. Um, I'm glad I left plenty of time to do the journey because it's obviously slow at this point. I have done... 78 miles almost two hours i have just under 70 to go 68 69 miles to go estimated time of arrival 9 38 i said i'd be there for 10 so as i say i'm glad i left the extra time and the car is predicting arrival with 41 percent remaining so that's up significantly from the 33% at the beginning of the journey but will still require me to do some amount of charging on the way home I expect it's been a bit misty this morning did think maybe it was smoke from electric car fires but so far I've not seen any electric car fires and the weather forecaster said it was mist so I'm going to go with the weather forecaster. Um, so here are the updates on the electric car fires. Again, none. So same as the day before, same as the week before, same as the month before, same as the year before, um, same as earlier in the decade. Still haven't seen one. There's a Tesla. Um, it wasn't on fire. It was black. But it, wasn't on, it hasn't been burnt out. It was driving. Um, 
So yeah, we'll keep looking, but I think basically it's all a nonsense. Still queuing. Seems this roadworks up ahead that was the cause of the queue. Just had the sign saying that we're down to one lane, um, 200 yards. So we're almost, almost in the roadworks. You can see this lorry is pulling across ahead of me, the Carlsberg man. Um, I think he's probably one of the last. And there's the cones uh, as he pulls across. So yeah, we're into the roadworks. Hopefully it will clear up a bit then and we'll get on the move. I still haven't seen any car fires, electric or otherwise. So that's all load of nonsense so far. Two hours, 40, 83 miles. Not a single fire, sorry. Sorry guys, sorry internet. You're, um, you're wrong again. Um, 9.44 is my estimated time of arrival according to sat nav now. So I did lose some extra time sitting in this traffic, I think. Uh, but that's kind of what you come to expect as the time moves from the initial prediction at six, seven in the morning through to rush hour. Obviously things do get worse. And no matter what sat nav system you have, it can't necessarily predict what's going to happen can do its best job and that's as much as it can do but I am still on track for arrival before 10 which is what I need and I'm currently 72% battery remaining in the car with an estimated arrival of 42% so um, plenty plenty to get there I will need still to charge on the way back so I have been watching out for charging spots on my way because they may be the ones that I stop on the way back. There does appear to be loads um, all up and down the A43. There's several options. Um, I think both junctions of the M40 there seem to be options. Uh, the junction that I cross of the M1 there's an option there and uh, there's options on the A45 between Northampton and Peterborough as well. And there are Fastnet ones in a couple of miles just near Oxford here. And according to the information on my screen, eight out of 10 of those available. So plenty of availability. So that's not a problem. So we're still chugging through the roadworks hopefully this will get a move on <laughs> and hopefully after we pass nine o'clock and traffic starts to clear in various parts of the country my prediction will actually become a little bit kinder and I'll have a bit more leeway in my arrival time it'd be quite nice to grab a coffee just before getting there although that probably won't happen ah well so yeah, seen lots of electric cars on the roads. Um, not, not the majority. I mean, the majority are still petrol and diesel cars out on the roads. But those green flashes on the number plate, you do see them um, both on my side of the road and on the other side of the road. There's a Tesla, a couple of um, cars ahead of me, I've noticed. I've seen quite a few BMWs, seen another Kia EV6, seen a Nero, seen a Mocha, seen a couple of Audis, seen some Volkswagens. So all the usual culprits, there's an Audi, the e-tron. Uh, saw an I-Pace, seen MG, seen two Polestars, there was another one just then. That's another Tesla. So yeah, you can you definitely come across them. But they're not in the in the majority, they're in the minority still. Although a sizable minority, I would say now. And we are out of the roadworks, which is fantastic. So let's get let's get going.
almost there. It's been a long journey. Three hours, 28 so far. Uh, maybe I should have my stop for McDonald's further up the road rather than early on like I did. Breaking a bit more. Um, but this is the end of the A34 section. I'm going to be turning at this big roundabout here onto the M3. And that will be the pretty much last bit. I think I take the M3 and then onto the M27, um, just across the edge of Southampton One Junction or something to get to where I want to be, going to the Southampton Science Park. Never been there before, so it's programmed into the sat nav and we will hopefully it will it will take me to the right place um kia sat nav is is very good for locations so i didn't need to put in a postcode didn't need to put in a street address i was just able to type straight in southampton science park and it had that in its knowledge um, i think it's the kia connected services that allow that i think the actual car information locally wouldn't have that inf wouldn't have that detail um, but it connects via the 3g 2g 3g 4g whatever service it's using in order to pull that data so if you didn't have the kia connected services as one of as your option if it's expired and you're not willing to pay the money or if you chose not to have it for some reason then i think you wouldn't get the ability to pinpoint specific places uh, by place name but i have um this is still a new car i think you get the connected services thrown in free of charge while it's under warranty so for the seven year period i think that's the car's warranty. The battery has an eight-year warranty. Just a tiny bit longer than the car's warranty. So here we are on the M3. Almost there, as I say. Been going three hours, 31 minutes now. Average of 4.0 miles per kilowatt hour. So after the road worked, I put my foot down a bit more. Uh, lost a little bit of efficiency there. Just to make sure I was going to have plenty of time. Um, estimated time of arrival is still 9.43 so from roadworks at Oxford to here I have tracked pretty much spot on to the sat nav sat nav now since I've got 10 miles left to do and I will arrive there with 47% battery I've got 51 at the moment so I started at home with 95, although as soon as I drove out my driveway, it dropped to 94, so I'm going to call it 94%. Um, due to a slight calculation error of when I put the car on last night, uh, I put it on just before I went to bed, I should have put it on earlier in the evening. I could have done, I was home, it was sat there on the drive, I just hadn't been bothered to get around to plugging it in, and didn't realise that I needed to leave it on quite as long as I did. Um, of course, I wasn't used to, um, my routine's not used to getting up at 5.30 in the morning, it's used to getting up a bit later, so that's where I hadn't kind of calculated. So I wasn't quite full, I mean plenty, 94%, 100%, not a massive difference, but it does look like on this occasion that could be the difference between just about making it here and back and not being able to make it here and back and therefore needing to do a little top-up top charge. Although they do also suggest that you shouldn't drain the battery too low if you can avoid it, so it's probably better for the car long term, over 20 year life or whatever it's got, to top up the, the battery on the way home anyway so it's not going too far below kind of 10%. And you don't want that anxiety on the way back where you're, will I make it, won't I make it? So, I will need to charge on the way back still by the looks of it. Uh, and so I probably will do. But well, I will do, no doubt. 
So that's the current state of affairs um, in terms of the car fires that I was looking out for. Still haven't seen any. Still, none. None at all. Lots of cars. No fires. Lots of electric cars. No fires. Here's a leaf. Not a fire. Um, that's from 2018. I mean, that's, that's had plenty of time. That's like, that's like six years it's had to catch fire. And it still hasn't managed it. <laughs> I mean, my car's only had a year and a half. You can, you can kind of forgive it a little bit, but that leaf, he's had six years to catch on fire. It still hasn't managed to. Well, yeah, I think you can, um, I think you catch the drift whole load of internet nonsense. Took me three hours 44, four miles per kilowatt hour, 146 miles. So it's taken me less than 50% of the battery because I started with 94. So 48, it took me 46% uh, of the battery. So there we go, so that's, um, that's today's drive complete, well not today's drive, this is One Direction, I'll be heading back again of course. Heading back the other way this evening, so it's the first half, first half of today's drive complete. So that's it, I'm parked here, no problem, 150ish um, miles, Peterborough to Southampton. Three hours fifty in an electric car, no problem. Um, car fires, as I say, no problem. Didn't see any, as per usual. Uh, I used less than fifty percent of the battery, so had I been fully charged before I left home, which I wasn't, but I should have been, then potentially I could get home on the other less than fifty percent. But that would still be running it a bit close to the the bottom, so I would probably want to stop on the way home just to do a fast top up. I uh, won't need any more than five, 10 minutes just to top up 10, 20% or something. Um, Cause of course then I'll charge at home. So all is good. Um, and I'm ready for a day's work. Although it's gonna be a tiring day cause I've got a long day doing some training. I've been driving a lot um, up early. I've got to drive a lot back home again. So um, yeah. It's uh, going to be a long day, but that's what you have to do sometimes. I have some short days as well, so I don't mind having the odd long days. Uh, it's, it's give and take, isn't it? In life, that's the way it is. So that's, um, that's me for now, and we will catch up for the journey home later. Okay, so this is real rain now. I'm throwing it down. It's been throwing it down for the last 20 minutes or so at least, maybe half an hour. So very wet roads, lots and lots of spray. Not nice conditions. <clears throat> but there we go. Seems to be that's what we get in England. Um, even more so than we ever used to. 
So, more rain, more video of window wipers splashing back and forwards and a lot of spray and not much else, I'm afraid. That's what you get when you video what, what you're doing when you're doing it. Um, I haven't chosen a sunny day to make a nice video. This is this is real. So we passed um, Newbury. Or did we pass Newbury? Is this Newbury coming up? I thought we would pass Newbury. Maybe somewhere else we passed. Um, there were some services there, and there was, according to my sat nav, there was shell recharge. Uh, six out of eight charge points were available. So there was only two in use out of eight. Uh, I could have stopped there and topped up, but I didn't want to. Uh, I don't like Shell particularly, and they generally are expensive. I'd much rather keep going. So I'm carrying on, and I think I'm likely to want to stop up near the M1 around Northampton. It's probably more likely um, I could stop at just past Oxford on, on the M40. Either of those are options. Currently the car says I have 96 miles remaining in the battery and 108 miles to do so we're about 12 miles down on, on what we need. Um, so I will need to stop um, but not for very long. Do with a drink as well and I could probably do with going to the toilet too so when I do come to stop it won't be just a charging stop it'll be a, a stop for other measures too and I don't think the charging will be the thing that takes the longest And so it looks like we're through the rain. Still getting the odd little spot on the window, but it looks like we are out of the other end of the clouds, which is nice to see. So currently been going an hour, 20 minutes on this return journey, done 69 miles. It's been a bit slow around Oxford, um, not as bad as it was on the way. Um, as you can see it's slowing down a bit now as we're approaching the M40 junction so four miles from the motorway currently on the A34 moving away from Oxford so there is grid surf chargers at the services that we're approaching at Bista I'm not sure if they're this side of my little M40 section or whether they're the other side I think they're the other side so there, where the M40 and the A43 meet at that reckoning. Um, according to my car, there's one available out of, the, out of the six there, but I wasn't planning on stopping there anyway. I'm planning on carrying on and going on to the ones on the M1 junction with the A43, A45. Uh, A43 I think at that point near Northampton so I have those programmed in as my stopping point um, I have them programmed in as a, as a waypoint so in the car that means that it will navigate and give me a final destination of home which is what I put into my final destination but it will also tell, tell me when I will be arriving at that waypoint, at that charging waypoint, and how long I will stay there to charge to my um, preferred percentage. So I've set the preferred percentage down to 50%, which is the lowest it will let you do. And the car is then saying that I will arrive at those services with 10% and 
it will take me 13 minutes to charge back up to 50% and that will then mean that I will get home with 35% remaining. <clears throat> now I'm happy to get home with 25% remaining so I could charge up to 40%. I'm also happy to get home with 15% remaining so I could charge up to 30%. So that 13 minutes can quite happily be six or seven minutes and I'll charge a little bit less. If I do that, then I will save myself obviously another, another one. If I, what was it saying? Let me have another look. So 13 minutes to charge, so I can halve that 13 minute stop if I charge less and I get home six minutes earlier or seven minutes earlier. It's not a real great saving, is it? Because 13 minutes is so little anyway. So it's not like I'm, even if I stop for the whole 13 minutes and charge to 50%, it's, it's not really a long time. And when you're saving a, an amount off a short amount anyway, then it's a very short saving, if that makes sense. It makes sense to me in my head. Hopefully it makes sense to you too. Um, so yeah, anyway, so the sat nav has now said there's two charge points available at the next stop on the M40. So if I did want to stop earlier, there are two available. And it's saying there are five available at the one that I'm intending to stop at. So it seems the one that I'm intending to stop at is the less busy, at least at the moment. So hopefully it remains that way. I don't see why it would change particularly. And all things will go to plan. There are some other places to go around the area. So had, have, uh, had, can't pass tense, something's going to happen. If, if I get there and there is all of them taken and there is a queue, which is not going to be the case, but if that were the case, as you often hear people suggesting in the internet comments, you know, the people who have absolutely no experience of it seem to think they know best, even though they know nothing. Um, those people who seem to think that cars explode and catch a light. Um, yep, those lot. Uh, well, so if they were right, then I can always go somewhere else. There's other, thing, other charge points in the nearby vicinity. So it's not a problem either way, even though it's not a problem anyway. Going back to the whole cars catching the light. Um, so I've carried on my journey, my, daily, my day's journeying. I've now done 219 miles today and I've not seen a single car on fire. Not an electric car, not a petrol car, not a diesel car. I've seen plenty of electric cars, the, I pass, pass loads of them, there's a Tesla just there in fact on the other side and there was a Tesla that I was just behind a, a moment ago. Oh there's an Ionic 5 just over the other side there and I'm coming to a stop in the queue. Um, so yeah there's, there's electric cars on both my carriageway and on the other carriageway that has been all day and as I was saying no fires. What a surprise. What a load of nonsense people spout on the internet, hey? There we go. So, assuming you're not prejudiced against electric vehicles for no valid reason, then you can take this as a actual proof that the people against electric cars on the internet are complete nonsense speak complete nonsense and are complete nonsense as well probably although I can't say I've met them so there we go and we're still queuing and I may well need to be in that other lane because I'm heading northbound for a junction on the M40 so I guess I kind of need to get myself in that lane do I go behind the Tesla the white Tesla do I go ahead of him will he let me in should we try to see if electric cars will let electric cars across. Maybe I'll just squeeze in anyway. Thank you, Mr. Tesla. Not sure whether you class that as being let in or not. I 
think I more or less just forced my way in. Just coming up to my junction off at the off the M40 here. This is the Chilwell Services Junction. The Chilwell or Cherwell? It might be Cherwell. Um, so this is where I could charge if I wanted to at these services. My car is telling me there are four available out of the six now there. So earlier there was one available, then there was two available, now there's four available out of the six. So if I wanted to, I can stop and charge here. I don't want to, I want to keep going. I want to keep going through till I get to Northampton and the services on the M1 there instead. But just to kind of prove the point, if I was wanting to charge here, I could charge here. And just to prove another point, that electric Volvo just over there, ahead of me, is not on fire. Wonder why that is, because uh, it doesn't. Oh, it's just ahead of me now. There we go. Looks like that um, Audi A4 petrol, diesel, whatever it is, is off to the services. He got out of the way. Maybe he's got range anxiety in his petrol car. Who knows? Probably just needs a toilet. Oh, and there's a queue. And uh, Paul Star has just gone past me. Maybe I should be in that lane. Now there's a gap, I will move into that lane. So a bit more traffic. It's always the way. Traffic, 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 traffic. But unsurprisingly, that pole star wasn't on fire either. Okay, I think maybe it says no entry to lorries. I was reading them no exit. I think I'm supposed to go through between these two tiny little bollards. That's a bit rubbish. And here we are, so yeah. I try to avoid these two people who are going back to their Enero. Because obviously I don't want to run them over then I can reverse to this one here. So here we are. I found my way to the charge point. Most difficult bit was actually finding my way around the services, getting through the different bits of the services. There we go. So here I am in the services, ready to charge. I have 11% remaining in the battery. Uh, I have done 250 miles today. Um, from home down to Southampton and back to here, it's taken me six hours. So after six hours of driving and 250 miles, I still have 11% remaining. Still have 30 more miles. So for my 250, that would make 280. But I'm eager for I'm not going to need, to, I'm going to need some more power to get home, so I need another 10-20%, something like that. And I need to go to the toilet and I need to get something to eat and drink, so we are stopping. Okay, so that charging stop wasn't entirely to plan. Well, I mean the charging stop was, it was the um, getting the, to the toilet and getting my food that took 
longer than I expected. So I pulled into the charger, plugged in. Car had said on approach it'd take 13 minutes to get to 50%. I thought to myself, well, I only need really about 30%. So I'll go in, I'll go to the toilet. There's McDonald's here. I'll just pop, get, some, get McDonald's nice and quick, come back out, stop the charge early rather than going all the way to the 50% and be done in what five ten minutes so plugged in started the charge went in went to the toilet ordered my mcdonald's and waited and there was just eight people coming and they've got a drive through here and uh, it took, took longer anyway so came back out it charged the 50 percent in 13 minutes actually as it suggested so the charging was exactly as expected the um the food took longer than expected so as i say the car charged up to 50 percent i would have been happy with 30 it would have been cheaper but hey there you go sometimes these things happen too fast I often find that actually more often the car is charged too quickly rather than me waiting around. When we're back on the road, I have 149 miles in the battery according to the car and 45 to go so i'll end up driving yeah, arriving home with 104 miles to spare which is way 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 more than i would have planned maybe i should be one of those people who just sits in the car plug it in sit in the car five minutes get on the way but i was hungry i want some food i don't want to wasted wasted energy i'll use the energy up after all It's just a bit more expensive than what I'd use it to get at home. Well, a lot more expensive than what I get at home. Ten times more expensive than what I get at home. But I don't use those charge points very often. Most of my journeys are done within the battery that I've the capacity that I put in at home. That'll be true of tomorrow when I come back in this sort of direction. I'm heading to Oxford tomorrow. So home to Peterborough, to Oxford and back would be done well within the capacity of this car's range. So that'll be entirely on my home charging. So here I am, I've returned back to the Peterborough services. This is the A1 Extra services, um, pretty close to where I live. So I will call this the end point, same as it was the starting point. I um, hope you enjoyed the journey. Uh, I found it quite good. Um, overall, had I left with a full battery rather than 94%, then maybe I could have got home without having to charge. Um, but it would have been really tight, it would have been a real push, so I don't think I would have wanted to try it. Um, it would have been running the battery really low as well, which you're not really supposed to do unless you have to. So, um, don't worry, I'm not worried about that. What I'm more concerned about was the fact that I charged too much at the services on the way back. Really, that, that has cost me. Um, because it's so much cheaper to charge at home. So it's probably it cost me £26 to do that charge. Now, if I'd done half as much, then obviously that'd been £13. And then 
it would have probably have cost me because obviously I would have less energy. So if we work out the missing energy there, it would probably cost me about pound fifty at home to get that extra thirteen pounds. That's how much the difference is. So rather than spending twenty-six pounds, I could have spent like thirteen pounds there and then topped up to the same amount with an extra pound fifty. So I could have saved kind of eleven pounds fifty or something. So just over a tenner lost there by not coming out of McDonald's earlier or not coming out of the services earlier. So maybe I need to um, consider that more when I'm charging. Um, go, to the, go to the charge points, plug in, go to the toilet, come out, five minutes, something like that, move the car, and then go back in if I want some food, um, if I'm on those fast charges and I don't need very long. But obviously, still, £26 for that charge, plus probably spent around six seven pounds worth of um home electricity at the beginning so you're probably looking 35 pounds or something for the whole journey so 35 pounds for a, a journey of 300 miles not too bad um similar to kind of petrol or diesel or something like that i guess um maybe a bit less yeah maybe similar so I haven't really lost anything in that respect compared to running a, a petrol or diesel car, but I have lost compared to what I could have gained. I could have gained yeah, much better or saved much better um, had I dealt with it in a better way. So that's the learning. <clears throat> All these things are, are good things to learn. So I will learn for the future. Um, tomorrow I have another journey, this time going to Oxford and back, there will be no need to charge. I'll plug in overnight, I will get loads of energy overnight and I can top the car completely up if I need to, um, not that I do. And then I won't need to charge on the way so that we have a much cheaper journey. Uh, so yeah, I have 39% left. I have five miles till I get back to my actual home, to my house. Um, it's been a good drive hope you've enjoyed it uh, thank you for joining me on this journey and I hope you'll tune into some of the others in the future until then enjoy the journey <laughs>